you don't belong here. No, not you. But those four words were not uncommon for a woman to hear, especially when working in a predominantly male career. Katrine Leroy, Kate Webb, and Frankie Fitzgerald all heard and felt these words as they covered the Vietnam War as journalists. But thank goodness they did not listen. In a new book by Elizabeth Becker, we learn how the contributions of these women rewrote the story of war. So I realized the women had no idea that there were women in Vietnam as reporters, as photographers, yet they knew about the women of World War II and they knew about women in the Gulf War. So we were the missing link. Such an interesting point you make there that was just not represented in what we knew about the Vietnam War. Let's talk about the specific journalist, Catherine Leroy, a French photojournalist. Catherine, like all of them, she was rebelling. She was a high school dropout. She was a gifted pianist, and her hobby was jumping from airplanes. She loved the pictures from the war in Vietnam, and she said, okay, I'm going to be a photographer. That's as thin as it was. She had no reason to believe she could do it. She bought a Leica camera. She bought a one-way ticket to Saigon with some money she earned in a boring job in Paris. And she walked through Saigon with her Leica camera tied around her neck with a shoelace. She was naive, to put it not mildly. But <laughs> she had a lot of self-confidence and a lot of courage. And she happened to arrive when the head of Associated Press Photography, a well-known photographer named Horst Foss, he himself a Pulitzer Prize winner, he had then very novel and radical idea that AP should buy good photographs no matter who took them, including women. So when Crazy. little... Crazy as that sounds. And so when Katrine Leroy shows up, uh, he says, OK, we'll try it out. And to his surprise, she was bringing back great photographs. And she continued to do original as well as good photographs. And that was surprising to him. And she had an eye for it. And like you said, the courage. What about Kate Webb, the war correspondent from New Zealand? How did she get to Vietnam, how does her story become involved in your book? So she's from New Zealand, raised in Australia, and intellectual parents of some consideration. So she had a very different life than Katrine, who's the petite bourgeois family. She takes all of her savings and buys a one-way ticket and brings along her portable typewriter with no resume, just like that. And it took her a while. She ate badly, lived in a hovel, but she eventually got work. The first place she went, they said, why would we hire a woman? That's United Press International. She was a journalist who was captured for 23 days. This is later in the war, in 1971. This was by the North Vietnamese in Cambodia. And while she was held captive, she, she was falsely declared dead. So that when she came out, the resurrection coming back to life, it was extraordinary. It was news all over the world. The New York Times had already written her obit, so then they had to put it, no, that was wrong. And she writes her stories and moves, goes back to see her family. So this was a different era. Mm -hmm. Women did not have credit cards. Women were not expected to do any of this. It is frustrating. It is maddening to hear that. But it's also so inspiring that I wish as a young journalist I could read about Kate Webb or even Frankie Fitzgerald. Let's talk about her. Frances Fitzgerald's the American. So now we have women from three different continents, not just three different countries, three continents. She's from extremely privileged background, blue blood, wealth, elite. She grew up with chauffeurs and servants and her mother was high society. Her dad was number three at the CIA. She knew what elite was all about. She was an honors graduate of Radcliffe, extremely intelligent, as Kate was. She wanted to do serious reporting. She applies to Newsweek and they say, women aren't qualified to be writers or reporters. You could be a researcher. Hmm. So she has a couple of years in Paris, poor thing. Then she comes back to New York and tries out again. And again, she can get some freelance and that's it. So she buys a ticket to Saigon. And I think because of such a privileged bubble she lived in, she was probably more immediately taken aback by what she saw in Vietnam than the other. She'd never seen 
anything resembling poverty like this and to see a beautiful country at war and all of the the trials and tribulations as well as the exhilaration it was it was the most amazing thing she ever felt in her life and so she started out that way i know that probably so much has changed but in your words what do you think has changed because these three women did their jobs the biggest change is that because of them women could become more correspondents they all paid their own way. They all had to find their own work. They had to do everything on spec. They had no editor waiting for them, anything at all. They had to live by whatever somebody would take. The next American war, media sent women staff to war. That was the Gulf War. The Pentagon no longer banned women from the battlefield. That's the result of those three women and other women who work there. So they're the missing link. So all the wonderful women you see and have known and seen and read, they're there because of those women. You know, as a journalist, I am just so grateful and glad that those women came before me so that we can be where we are today, basically. I mean, people said, you don't belong. And they said, well, we're going to get the story anyway. That's right. You know, Elizabeth Becker is from right here in uh, Seattle. She was a, a Husky grad, and we're even more proud to, to, to share her story and, and to keep sharing the stories of the women who really did pave the way. Thank you so much for that.